one last series, Buck That Trend, featuring a husband and wife team who set sail on local children's television for 27 years, beginning in 1967. Carter Merbriar was a Lutheran minister who decided he could reach more children through television than he could on the pulpit, an epiphany that turned into Captain Noah. The show was originally sponsored by the Philadelphia Council of Churches, which no longer exists. I think we had almost a religious call to do Captain Noah, Pat and right. I. And that's why we had things like the word of the day, American folklore. We did characters from American history every day that we wanted children to know what they could grow up and become. If you have a birthday today, you're sharing your birthday with Lincoln University, which was founded in 1854, Japanese Emperor Hirohito, poet Rod McEwen, and the Duke of Wellington, who defeated Napoleon at Waterloo. Puppets have a long pedigree on children's television, and the Murbriars hired a puppeteer during the early days of the show. When they ran out of their own money, Pat came up with a solution. You know what? I'm a puppeteer. <laughs> Little Patricia saved the show. Take it away, Wally. Hi there, dear sports fans. This is your old Oscar News sportscaster, Wally the Walrus. Uh, good morning, I'm Christopher Columbus Crow, reporting that is six, 16 and a half minutes after, that's right, 7 o'clock in the morning, and about the schools I've flown over. Sports stars always played an important role on Captain Noah, not for their athletic exploits, but to share life lessons. And I know that you kept ever before you a wonderful lady, your mother. Well, I, I think uh, parents should be role models. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's a cop-out uh, to blame peer, peer pressure because every human being knows right from wrong. And for you to do something that you know is wrong just because your friends do it, that's not right. And that, to me, is a cop-out. Charles Barkley. I love my God family. love him, came, came on our show on his wrong. own. And he I would come on before be practice. Nobody paid him and did a little thing on a weekly basis for children. The Philly Fanatic was born on Captain Miller. Tim McCarver introduced the Philly Fanatic in his first public appearance on our show. And every once in a while on the Philly Fanatic's birthday, they have Pat and I in as the godparents of the Philly team. Captain and Mrs. Noah decided to adorn the ark with children's pictures and extended the invitation with music. Send your pictures to dear old Captain Noah. Send today. Send right away. Send your pictures to dear old Captain Noah. Your colored pen will do the trick. It's interesting to me how many children spoke through the pictures they sent in. I think the children all always loved doing it and the fact that they could send it in to us and maybe we would show it. And we couldn't show them all, but we certainly did show enough of them, didn't we? Be a joy, little boy. Okay. Organist Larry Ferrari was always along for the ride on the magical arc, adding his own musical style to the fun. Finally, in 1994, after 27 years of learning, music, and adventure, it was time for Captain and Mrs. Noah and their magical ark to retire. We made the decision. We were told by every station manager that when we retired, it was our decision. And indeed, it was. With Captain Noah's retirement, the heyday of local children's programming had passed. Red and yellow and pink and green 
purple, and orange, and blue. Now you can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, too.